So times are ticking on how many times I can test fit this engine. Because outside, it snowed. It snowed for about three or four days straight. I couldn't test fit the engine Thursday like I wanted to. So we're doing it today on my other day off. Um, final test fit. We got an email from Just Engineering. They have a, if not the best, steering rack relocation kit. You cut and you notch a subframe and then you weld in other supporting plates and it makes it flush with the subframe. Which, if you guys remember, that's the first thing we were hitting last time we test fitted the bear. So today is the last day I'm going to test fit it before I move the car into the backyard. So we have space up here to do other bits and bobs. And we're going to see how it goes. If it... on the front here. Just some finicking. We'll move here, move there. I get a much better idea. I'm not caught in anything. Alright, I see what's hitting. I can change the angle. There we go. We're gonna have to massage the back firewall as we thought we would. I can disconnect entirely. That we can. Look at that. It is not mounted in here. It is setting on the subframe. Now that that's where it's going to be even with the steering rack. Although, it would still hit the steering rack slightly down here. Let me take it off this little thingy. So regardless, I do want to do the cut and move this whole thing back a little bit. Because the steering rack is going to be moved to right about halfway in here. So, 
That would give us an extra, probably half inch lower. Oh, we can do a test fit close. Although, it's gonna hit. We're not that far from latching, which is very, very exciting. And yes, the first thing we're hitting is these little ribs here. But, we got about two inches we need. And then this thing, We'll have a bear in it and nobody will know. Like I said, BC300Z, his setup is awesome. He has a pull fan, his radiator, and then his intercooler is so close it actually helps pull air through it. And it's all super compact in this area. Remember, this is just a nose panel. The bumper goes all the way out to right about here, if not a little bit further, if I get the, the bumper I want, just money, but there's a Barra in the Z, <laughs> and it looks fucking awesome. Truly can't get enough of doing this and just walking up, and there's a Barra. Yes, it doesn't close all the way. I know that. Um, like I most likely have already said, there's no suffering spacers, which you can stack up to 12 mils. You can go higher, but it's kind of like risking it. So 12 mils higher than subframe modifying most likely half an inch if I can, 0.75. If we're lucky, lower. So the car is gonna go up, motor's gonna go down slightly. And then the hood skeleton parts right here, like I said, I'm hitting these two ribs and this guy right here. So if I remove those, cause it, it'll clear. Cause right now this part is hitting this. These are just barely clipping the, the sides up over here. But I'm super, super happy with how this is going. Like I said, this is the last time it's going to get test fitted before I move the oil pan, start resealing the motor, a new timing chain, all that jazz. Because it's snowing out here and I'm going to put it in the back and most likely get a carport or at least a tarp to cover it. Most likely a carport so I can work on it in here because... Not just the motor is getting done. We're going to do brake lines. We're going to fix the small patches of spot welds given out. Just kind of reseal it, re-undercoat it, have to run new fuel lines. There goes the motor. Uh <laughs> there is back on the engine stand in the garage where it's going to live for a while. Uh, but we got to work on the daily. It snowed a lot and it's going to keep snowing. It's Colorado. It's getting dark already and it's like three. Sunsets at like 4.50 here right now. It's great. So, if you guys don't know, my daily is a 1983 Toyota Celica. So, let's go over to it. So, funny story on how I actually got this car. I moved here. Like I said, I moved here in the Z. And I needed a daily. I didn't really need it. But I wanted to retire the Z as a daily. So, what I did was I found a mint 1989 Toyota Camry, which is fucking awesome. It's five speed, front wheel drive. I'll try to pop up a picture over here. Loved it, it had almost 400,000 miles on it. Looked brand new, interior was mint, great. But I found out that they make an all wheel drive one and I really wanted it. So I found one for cheap. My buddy spotted me some cash, went and picked it up for $1,800. Paid him back, fixed it, a few things here. I only had it <laughs> for two weeks. And this was listed for uh, $4,500. And it's some dude that lives in the mountains here in Colorado that didn't want to crash it because of the snow. And he said he'll trade for Subarus. Now, the only reason you'd want a Subaru is you want it all-wheel drive. Since these are rear-wheel drive, these are the last of the Celicas that were rear-wheel drive. It is a solid rear axle. So I said, hey, I have an all-wheel drive Toyota Camry. Would you want to trade? And we straight traded my shitbox $1,800 all-wheel drive Camry for a mint, new to me, 1983 Toyota Celica. It does have the 84 front end, so the pop-ups are actually pop-ups, not flip-ups, which look really weird when they're not in use. But this is my daily. It has 230,000 miles, and it is the legendary 20RE motor. So it's a truck motor that they put in everything. And it runs like a top. If I can open this thing, there we go. So, 22RE. Uh, the 22R is carbureted. This one's fuel injected. 
it's beautiful. It came manual swapped. It wasn't automatic. Uh, they changed the front clip so they're pop-ups, not flip-ups, like I said. And yeah, it's pretty stock. I've just done maintenance on it. And the typical thing when you buy a new car is uh, you slam it. So no proper suspension is in here. The rear is just um, aftermarket bump stops that uh, progressively get harder as they squish down. So I'm right on bump stops in the back. And the front is just cut springs. Eventually, taking the toy tuning, but their stuff is expensive as much as I love it. And I do have rear springs for here, which we're going to install. They slip right on. I don't have to really do much to this, but since it's snowing, I want to put the stocks back on that are a little beefier and kind of raise me up from the ground. But in the back from Mad Hero, we have SSR Mark 1s, um, unrestored. All I did was change the hardware out. Of course, new tires, uh, I believe 14 by seven and a half. It's, it's their largest, most aggressive size. And I still have a one inch spacer in the back, which gave me some pretty damn good fitment. All right, love it. And then the front, I have some Superstars SSO1s, also known as the Shurikens. Uh, I'm trying to sell these right now, just mix it up. I have some other special wheels that I'll, I'll put in a clip of, but these came pretty, pretty unrestored, polished lips the best I could, new hardware, new paint um seal them all of that and of course new tires they are both 14 inches although these look a lot smaller but this is the daily the interior was grandpa brown on grandpa brown i love this gold this is oem it's beautiful but in here uh seat covers because i'm working on getting different seats but it was brown and brown i read it all black it's 30 it's my daily this is from jess emporium this is a 326 millimeter wheel and I believe it says it on the back i gotta find it one of these okay it's covered by the hub here this is number nine of 20 in the world limited run and it's actually based off a spalding uh message wheel which i want for this car they look cool based off an actual wheel uh but like i said we have technically 230k the speedo broke so he didn't know how fast he was going and he put like about 10,000 miles on it, so I fixed the Speedo. Everything works. Uh, it does have back seats, but they are pretty useless unless you're an amputee. I am missing some trunk trim, but this is my little work truck and the daily, which we're going to switch out the tires on now. Fortunately, my car came with Celica Supra wheels, which have a little bit wider. They're nicer. I polish them up a little bit. They're just dirty as shit. They're much wider than these, so we're gonna slap them on. And here we are. Uh, stock springs, like I said, are just cut. They're, they're just there, riding on different bump stops, but we do have some hyper coils. Unfortunately, these bad boys just slip right in. I don't have to do anything. And there we go. Slides right on. I didn't really have my camera stand, so. Believe me, super easy. Super high quality, too. And we're on. Um, they are dry rotted slightly, but they hold air. That's all that really matters to me. These are shank style. They just have a bevel. They have a tiny one and actually goes into the wheel more to center it. Uh, the SSR Mark 1s need it. Superstars up front don't. They're fine with the normal bevel lug nuts, but if you ever buy a JDM wheel, look at what lug nuts you're gonna need because they're all they're all slightly different. So we gotta switch back. Big boy. It looks good to me. So I can take the blue jack out. Let's see, it's gonna sit higher than I want, but for snow, it's all I really need. It'll settle out, but <sighs> yes, it's ugly, I know, but it's for the snow. Now the front. These are impact rated, I just painted them chrome. No, 
dirty one. Up a little too low on the front. I know. Okay. Is the back will settle a little bit more? I think I get like another half inch if I remember correctly. And the front's really low, so yes, we're like, what? but I'm still taller off the ground than I was before with my cool boy tires. <laughs>